Hello boys and girls, and welcome to another Art with Miss Taub. Hopefully you just listened to Eric Carle's The Very Busy Spider. Eric Carle is the author and he's also the illustrator of this book. He does something called collage artwork. A collage is when you cut paper and then glue it back together to form an artwork. Eric Carle even paints his papers with these beautiful colors and textures before cutting them up to create his collages. We will be using his illustrations as inspiration for our spiderweb collages. I will be showing you how to create two different versions of this collage, but feel free to use whatever paper you have available. You want to have your types of line worksheets so you can look at the different directions of the lines when we create them. You will also want to have something shaped like a circle so that you can use it to trace the circle that you will need for your spider. I'm using this blue paper, but you could use newspaper or brown paper bag, anything that stands out against your drawing. You'll also want a pair of scissors and a glue stick because remember, we are creating a collage. A collage is any artwork that you cut paper and glue it back together to create art, just like the illustrations by Eric Carle. I will be using a white pastel on black paper, but feel free to use a white crayon on black paper. And I will be using a black marker on my white paper. I'm going to show you two different kinds of spider webs. Both kinds start with a dot in the upper corner. Then you wanna find that dot and you wanna draw a diagonal line with your finger to draw your next dot. You don't wanna go underneath it or next to it. You wanna go as far away as possible diagonally to draw your second dot. Next, I'm going to use my helper hand to measure a space between my dots. I place my hand down and on the other side, I draw my second dot. I do it again and I draw my third dot. Now I have three dots at the very bottom of my paper. I'm gonna do the same thing, but going up the side. So I place my hand and measure a space and on the other side, I draw my dot. Now I have five on the edge and one in the upper corner. I'm gonna do the same thing again on this white paper so you can see how I use my hand like a measuring tool. Now I'm going to draw a diagonal line from one corner to the other. I like to draw it with my finger first so that I know exactly which way I'm going. I'm gonna do the same thing on my white paper so you can see it twice. Remember, this line should be diagonal. Now I'm going to connect that corner dot to all the other dots that I drew. This way I can create the first step of my web. All of your lines should be going diagonally to the corner. Do the best you can to draw a straight line. I know it can be super tricky sometimes. Now it's time to show you the two different types of webs that you can do. On this one, I'm going to draw a bumpy line, and on the white one, I'll do a straight line. Your bumpy line should curve towards the corner. I'll show you what that looks like. All of your bumps, the top part of your bump, should be towards that corner with that first dot that you drew, like this. You'll notice my curve starts at the, at the edge of the paper, and then it stops when I hit that line. Every space in between will have a bumpy line. This way is a little bit trickier, but it will look like a more realistic web. Let me show you what it looks like with a straight line. Again, I take my time and draw my straight line kind of on a curve, and I stop after every line to make sure that my straight line is kind of going in the direction of my spider web. The more I do, I might want to space them out a little bit further, but as long as I take my time and draw straight lines that connect to all of these other lines, I will be creating my web. Now, I kind of got bored of just doing straight lines, so eventually I started kind of making a zigzag, but still curving my line around to make my web. You can go for as far as you like, but I think after this one I might stop so that I have space for my spider at the bottom. Now it's time to do the same thing over here on the black paper, but instead I'm going to use a bumpy line. If the bumpy line is a little bit too tricky, don't forget that you can use straight lines too. After all, you are the artist and you get to make all of those important decisions. 
I'm not going to fill up my spider web paper because I want to leave a little bit of space to collage my spider on the bottom. Remember, a collage is when we cut and glue paper together. I'm going to get my circle tracer or a lid that will work as a circle tracer, and I'm going to trace my circle. Your helper hand is the hand that you do not write with. So with your helper hand, you want to hold that tracer very hard down so that your marker or pencil can go around the edge to create your circle. If it happens to pop out like mine just did, put it back just like a puzzle piece so that you can finish tracing your circle. I'm going to do two because I'm going to show you two ways that you can make your spider. Now it's time to find your scissors. When you're holding your scissors, your fingers go into the bigger hole and your thumb goes into the round hole so that you can open and shut your scissors or chomp, chomp, chomp on your paper while your helper hand is the one that moves the paper. You'll notice my scissors stay in the same place. I don't move them all over the place because my helper hand is doing all the work by rotating or turning my paper. This is a skill that takes a lot of practice. So if your circle does not come out perfect, that is okay because you are still learning and the more you do it the better you will get now i'm going to glue my circles onto my paper one of these circles i will use um, a marker to create the legs but on the other one i'm going to actually cut a few long skinny rectangles for my spider's legs do you know how many legs spiders have if you said eight, you would be right. So whether you are drawing or using paper for your legs, please make sure your spider has all eight of his or her legs. You'll notice when I'm gluing down the legs, I just put a little bit of glue on the corner and then I put it underneath the spider's body. I don't need to put glue on the whole thing because as long as there is enough glue on the edge and it's underneath my spider body, it should stay in place, no problem. No need for gluey fingers, friends. Remember, you do not have to use cut paper for your legs. If you would like to draw your legs using marker, that is up to you because you are the artist. Last but not least, I am adding some <laughs> eyeballs on my spiders and a couple of sharp fangs. I even decided to add some fuzzy legs because I don't know if you've ever seen a spider up close but some of them have really funny fuzzy legs. Maybe you want to add some flies using ovals and bumpy lines inside their web for their dinner. It's up to you. You're the artist. But I cannot wait to see your amazing spider webs and spider collages that you send me. Have fun and I'll see you soon.